Hello guys, welcome back to Irish for the vlogs and today we have the League of Ireland weekly roundup. It's that time of the week again, so uh, let's get into this. Now at last, the Premier Division and First Division will kick off on the 31st of July. It's been confirmed. The majority, if not all, clubs are now back training. The league will only be at 18 games in total. However, the same rules will apply. One automatic relegation, one automatic promotion. The First Division playoffs will remain the same as this as if it was 36 games. Whoever comes through the playoffs will face the team who finishes second bottom in the Premier Division in the final. Obviously, the winners will be in the Premier Division the following season. Good news as well is that the FAI Cup will take place. It appears we will have to enter the quarter-final stage once the league has finished up. We all know it's not ideal. However, we really need to get going at this stage. So let's get on with it. Now, so Derry City news. Derry City take up a good segment of this week's uh, roundup, to be honest with you. The Canadian Stripes appear to be very busy when it comes to incomings, outgoings and contracts. First of all, Loney Stephen Mallon has signed an extension to his contract, which will see the young talent at winger stay till the end of the season. The Sheffield United man has started in flying form earlier on in the season. And, you know, this signs a major coup for the club as they hope to push for Europe. Rumours abound the striker David Parkhouse could be set to return to the club. The 20-year-old's loan deal has expired at Stevenage. This will be a massive coup as he scored 19 goals in all competitions last season for the club. If they had a front three of Figueroa, Malin, for example, and Parkhouse, that's as good as any in the league and a scary proposition for the rest of the league. Norwegian forward Tim Nielsen has left Derry City by mutual consent. It is not clear why the 27-year-old has left the Brandywell. The striker played four games for the club without a goal and he has returned back to Norway. Another player who could be on his way out of the club is winger stroke wing back stroke right back Jamie McDonough. Jamie interestingly had rejected a move to St. Patrick's Athletic pre-pandemic. However, it appeared a 23-year-old could be on his way to Glen Thorn in the Irish League. Which, um, for me, that's uh, quite an interesting one, to be honest. And finally, regarding Derry City, they've completed the signing of Scottish midfielder Joe Thompson. Joe had started his youth career at Glasgow Celtic, and more recently had played for Dunfermline in Scotland. It is thought that Paddy McCourt had a huge influence on this signing. So guys, get down in the comments, especially if you're a Derry fan, a lot to digest there. What are your general opinions on the contract signs, in go the incomings, rather, the outgoings and possible players coming into the club now it couldn't be a weekly round of video without some waterford fc news to be fair um, i'm delighted to report that most of it is good news for the club this week first of all striker michael o'connor has signed for the third time for the club the 20 year old 21 year old rather had left in june as uncertainty clouded over the Munster club the mere fact that he has re-signed must be a good indication that things are looking up at the RSC. So not the fact that Michael O'Connor is just back at the club, which is great news in itself for Waterford, but there must be a good reason why he's returned. So um, the picture looks better, I believe, there. However, Waterford do continue to search for a new manager after John Cotter rejected the chance to take the reins. He was part of... The coaching set up with Alan Reynolds at the club. It's believed the club are looking at a number of options in Britain. So um, this could, um, I'd imagine they're looking to bring in a manager very quickly. But at the same time, you want the right candidates. I do think John would have been a good um, appointment. However, John rejected himself. So um, that's a pity from Waterford's point of view. Now, Waterford FC have organised a GoFundMe page by Alan Forrestal called... Donate your match ticket. Now, I believe they've raised over 10k at this present time, which isn't bad, but obviously they like to do a bit better. It is important to note that this money will not be going to the club owners, etc. The new manager will be contacted and he will decide how the money is spent. So, if you're a Waterford FC fan, you know, there's an element of control here. Don't be worrying. The likes of um, 
Alan's doing great work at the club as well, and he's a, a huge fan and supporter, and he set this up, you know. Um, there's no way this mo- any of this money be going to the club owners. So, um, look, keep an eye out for the links. I'll have all GoFundMe links in the description. So, um, if you're a Waterford supporter, please donate there. Now, speaking of GoFundMe page, the Sligo Rovers Bitter Red Trust started a fund me a few days ago, and what they've done is incredible. They've actually, so far, as I speak, they have raised a whopping 45k, which is some amount of money in space a few days. They hope to reach 50, by the time this goes out, they may have reached 50. Just incredible scenes. Um, amazing work. And credit to the supporters and credit to the town of Sligo on, on that achievement. Look, Sligo, you know, this money will be a massive, massive help as they go into the new season. So when I say new season, new kickoff, I guess. But uh, fantastic work by Sligo and well done there. Now, finally for this week, it's thought that Shamrock Rovers may have a friendly lined up against... Parisian Giants Paris Saint-Germain. The French outfit have a friendly lined up with Le Havre from France and are in talks with Glasgow Celtic and Shamrock Rovers over friendlies. Um, that would be incredible. Um, I'd imagine it would be at would it be at Tallis Stadium, but um, it'd be fantastic if uh, we had a PSG Shamrock Rovers friendly. Great for the club, great for the league, and uh, sure to bring a bit of money in as we all know. So that's it, guys, for the weekly roundup. I hope you enjoyed. Um, any opinions, get down in the comments, stick them down there. The GoFundMe links will be in the description for Sligo and Waterford. And that's about it. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll talk to you again. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.